All right, so uh, Visual Studio is going to be our development environment. Uh, and we saw a moment ago, right before the break, that we can test our project or simulate our project in a virtual device. It basically opened up in a web browser. It opened up in Google Chrome. Uh, remember, Android is uh, a Google product. Google Chrome is a Google product. So we will be able to use Google Chrome as a way to debug and test these projects to run on uh, Android devices. And speaking of Android devices, we can use the same Visual Studio and code and everything to run the project on a device. So here I am running that exact project from a moment ago, plugged in. There's the device, and it says right here, um, Adobe uh, device is ready. So we'll be able to do this, of course. I'll show you how. But right now, I've got that project loaded up here, and then it you know, detects orientation and stuff. It flipped right there. So uh, we'll be able to run off of a device. If you simply plug in your device, it probably won't work. So uh, we have more of a lecture to do on that. But this is what we're going to have in store eventually. Well, let's see more about what we've got working here. Um, on our project, uh, we have this sort of like welcome screen of various links that you should look at at some point. And um, this screen right here um, has a lot of great documentation you should read at some point. <coughs> Let's say for the moment, you see, uh, we're going to kind of orient ourselves to this screen with brand new stuff on the screen. Uh, we have, of course, a menu bar at the top, the usual file, all of that, debug, etc. There's this various main toolbar with various things, create a new project, uh, save all. That's going to be very useful as we work with more than one file. We're going to need to save one or all of our files. Here's undo and redo, well, you know, the keyboard shortcuts. Redo here is actually control Y. Um, sometimes you know, control shift Z is a redo on some software, but here they've got as control Z or Z and control Y back and forth. Um, we've got uh, debug, release, configuration manager, Android. Oh, look, here we have a few ways to start to develop our project over on iOS and such. But I have to stop at this point to say it says iOS simulate an iPhone. This might not fully work properly, even though we have the iOS option at a certain point. Because behind the scenes, a lot of stuff is happening. And uh, if you don't have all of the right software set up, it might not fully work. So I'll be covering all of those different aspects of all of this, of course. But notice we're able to test for these platforms. And even though Cordova said we can also create projects for BlackBerry and such. It's not here automatically unless you set it up. But we're going to be in Android. And then we've got Simulate. That's got a little drop down as well. Simulate uh, on these different ones. Nexus or tablet or 10-inch tablet or device. And uh, don't pick that at the moment, but that's simulating on a, uh, not, uh, that's testing or simulating on a real device. Now, just by plugging in your own phone, it probably will not work, simply plugging it in. And that's OK. I, I don't plan that your devices will work right away until after we do our lecture to set up a device. Uh, various other things here. OK, so then we've got this window that's open. Um, for the moment, uh, go ahead and close this tab, this um, overview tab. But there was a lot of great information on that tab that I do want to read. Well, to get back to the tab, it's under Project Overview. So that tab we were just looking at that you ever want to get back to to give you that sort of jump start, you can always go back to Project Overview. There it is. At the bottom, you your screen might be slightly different than mine. But in mine, I've got a tab. I've got a panel output. Tab output, error list. Got some stuff that happened there. I deployed to my real device. Mine's a Motorola something, so it says Motorola stuff. Okay. Is dirty. That's one. Is dirty. False. 
Okay, and then we've got error list. Here's going to be a, an important panel. If you don't see it, don't worry about it just yet. But here's a panel of errors. Uh, errors and warnings and messages and stuff that will be very useful as we test our code. Last month we were testing our code and we were looking at the control. We were looking at the developers panel in Google Chrome. We have another kind of developers panel here where we will also still see things like um, you know, error messages or console output and such. If you don't see these two tabs down here up on the window menu, um, oh, where did they put it? View menu? Yeah, it's under view. Under view, you have these different ones. So if you didn't see an error list like me, under the view menu, we have error list. So view shows a lot of panels. If you move a panel, if you close a panel, we can get back to them here under view. On the right side, I've got one called properties. So various things that are selected, its properties would appear here. So you can change values. And then above that is the solution explorer, um, where we're going to see basically the folder of this project. Uh, and I see something about dependencies and merges and plugins and all of that. Okay, that's fine. Then there's a, something here that says www. Open up that one. It's a folder, but it's got a globe on it. Uh, open up the triangle right here in the Solution Explorer under www. And what do you see? Scripts. You see, you see a yes, a web project, HTML, CSS folder, JavaScript folder, images folder. Double click on index.html. When you double click that index HTML, then you get HTML. Here's the index project. And so uh, when, you, when you simulated the project before the break, you saw the Cordova mascot, which is a little cube robot thing. And it says, Apache Cordova, device is ready. Do you see that in this code? What line number? 22. So if I wanted the app to say something else, Line 22 seems to be the right spot. Instead of it saying device ready, and say ready to rock. And as we're writing code here, this highlights. And on the right side over here, this is very subtle, but on the right side here, there's a little blue line to show where I left my cursor. There's a little yellow to show that that line has been edited. So because I scrolled down here, I don't see anything. When I scroll right here, this subtle blue line is telling me that that, that line of code is highlighted. That's yellow. And on the top here, there's a little asterisk on index meaning I haven't saved. So if you changed Ready to Rock and you save, that becomes green. Changes have been saved. And then on the scroll bar here, it also reflects that. My mouse, my cursor is currently there. And there was a line of code that got changed, which has been saved. So anywhere where you make changes on the left now it's gonna mark you haven't saved stuff that's been saved that hasn't been saved whatever I did there and then when you save that highlights so it's just little subtle things that we will see as we work with this other code editor which gives us um, a lot more power and feedback and um, uh, let's let's try well so there's a lot of cool stuff to learn, but breathe, we'll take it in. So 
let's click on the uh, on that on the run button again, the little green icon. Uh, if you change that, I want to see it. So change that line 22, and then click the the green triangle, and then let your project reload in the simulator. Yes. Ran out of space. Okay. So when you make a little change and then simulate the project again, you should see that that changed. Now, depending on the size of your screen, you may see more or less than me. I think you guys see more on your screens because you've got bigger monitors than me. The resolution actually is different. But what I see when I do this simulation, what I see when I do the simulation is the preview simulator, and then behind it, Visual Studio has changed a little bit. The screen looks a little different. There's some other stuff here. And I see a tab, DOM Explorer Index. I see the original tab of Index. And I can make changes still in the HTML file when I save it. Those changes save in the simulator too. So I got, you probably got three different tabs. The original index tab where we made the change, I made another change. I saved it. Up at the top it says the Cordova, the blank Cordova app one is running at the moment. It also shows here. Now these icons have changed. It doesn't have the green icon anymore. It's got pause the simulation, uh, stop the, the, the debugging, or restart it. But what I did was I, I made a change in the code index. I saved it. And then it automatically updated in the simulator. Again, the, if you've got a bigger screen, you'll get to see more of this at once. If you're really fancy and you're at home, if you've got two monitors, well, on one monitor you'll have your code, and the other monitor you'll have your simulator, debugger, and such. If you're really fancy like me, you have three monitors. So, um, oh, what's also going on here? You get a tab here, Cordova Plugin Simulation. So again, my screen's a little smaller, but what you see here, geolocation. I can simulate, I can send a location on a map in the world to the device so that whatever code I write detects a location. Waterloo, Kitchener, I think this is in Canada. Um, so what else can I do? Fire an event. If a person presses the back button on their device, I tap fire, event, back button, then this will act like a person pressed the back button on a device, which is usually an Android device. iPhones don't have a back button. Let's see what else we have. Device platform, change various aspects, geolocation, manufacturer, all that stuff. I'm going to click stop the debugging. Go back to the code. So I see this uh, HTML file, and we're going to break down everything that's in it, of course, and how to add to it and such. But um, I don't, I don't see anywhere here an image tag. Where did that, where did that Cordova mascot icon? come from when when I had it on the simulator or on the real device I've got a graphic and I don't see an image tag let's go look at the CSS folder in the solution we're gonna think in terms now of solution we've got this project a solution is everything in the project 
um, solution and project could be synonymous. It's just Microsoft Microsoft's terminology. It's a solution. It's a project. But everything in this folder is our solution, is, is our project. So inside the solution, inside the CSS file, index CSS. Double click that, you get a CSS file. You get various CSS rules that we haven't talked about yet and some uh, that we have. But I see something here, line 35. Cordova PNG in the images folder. And I see some things about position and size and such. I've got a CSS rule for headings. Again, we haven't done a lot of CSS yet, but we definitely will. But if you understand any of this, you can maybe think about changing some of this stuff. For example, if you go over to line 78, dot event dot received dot is for a class. We, we mentioned that last time, last month. So there's some sort of class happening and some sort of background color. So if I change that to something else, and Visual Studio might pop up to give me examples, red, pale, violet, red, orange, red. So try this on line 78, change it to, from background color to something else. Hex color, RGB color, named color. Save it and run it. Keyboard shortcut in Visual Studio is F5. So after you save your work, get in the habit of pressing F5, which is the same thing as pressing that simulate button. If the simulator is not running, after you save, F5 will run it to save yourself a little bit of effort. Control S, F5. Ready to rock. Different color. If I wanted a different graphic in the CSS, I would see, I could probably figure out what, um, what I need to change to change that picture, which of course we'll talk about. We'll talk about it. But I'm just kind of playing around. This project here, we're going to delete it at the end of the day. You can keep it if you want, but you don't have to. Today we're going to explore this, the software, play around with some code, nothing too fancy yet. But let's say I, I wanted a different color over here. Blue. Lots of blues to choose from. Cadet blue. Save it. Simulator updates. If the simulator didn't quite update, you also have the way up here to force it to restart. Control Shift F5. If the simulator is not running, F5 starts it. And then I never remember it, but Control Shift F5 restarts it. And what else we have? Shift F5 stops it. I never remember that one, and break all, I never remember that one. I just close it and start it again. But I should probably memorize them at some point. So we edited a little bit of the CSS. We'll look at what these various other things mean. If you took the other classes, what is this doing? What is line 46 doing? Media queries. So um, we'll cover what all of this means and uh, how to work it and all of that, of course. Okay, that's the that's two of the columns of our app. HTML, CSS. What's the third column? CSS, HTML, and the third column? JavaScript. JavaScript. Let's go look at. I'm going to stop the simulation. Let's go look at our scripts folder. 
We've got index.js and platform overrides. Now here's one thing that's built into Visual Studio that I don't like, but you might. If you simply click one time on a file, it sort of does like a quick open. Do you see also here, those two tabs on the top, those two files are open. This one that appeared on the right is a quick view or a quick open, whatever they call it. So if you click once on a file, it will open it quickly, briefly for you to kind of quickly work with it. I kind of don't like that because I, I click on things to kind of move around and whoops, I opened another file. So though if you want to turn that off, if you don't like that, that quick view, it's this icon right here, which obviously looks like Mario's hat from Super Mario 1 but it is a tab to show that it opens up on the right side. So um, I don't like that. I turn it off. You can leave it on. But the difference is preview selected item. I click on stuff to kind of navigate, and I don't like that it opens for me. So I'm going to turn it off. And then I'm going to double click to open it for real on the left. The index file in this template file is only uh, the, the HTML. Now, another thing that's for the basic built-in project, index, index, index. They're all called index, but one's JS, one's CSS, one's HTML. doesn't matter, but when I say, let's go to the index file, you're going to say, which one? Well, we've got three of them. OK, the HTML file has 30 lines. The CSS file has 99 lines. And the JS file has 30 lines. So all of these lines here are for this very, very basic um, you know, devices ready template splash project, quick project thing. So this, uh, not that one. So the project uh, JavaScript. For an introduction to the blank template, see the following documentation. So Microsoft there has a link for you to go check out at some point that further explains what this template file is about. But when we get past the comments, we see our immediately invoked function expression, our use strict, and then document.addEventListener, and functions and variables. Remember to mute your devices, please. Someone's device keeps uh, making noise. So we have all of these things that we've seen versions of, making a function, making variables. We've got document.getElementById because we don't have jQuery at the moment. We can add jQuery, of course, but this starting point file didn't come with jQuery. So it uses the old syntax, document.getElementById instead of the dollar symbol. So if I was trying to do this, don't do this, but if I was trying to do this, this is equivalent. Remember, this, this, is, um, this is the uh, jQuery. But we cannot do the jQuery selector because we don't have the jQuery library in the index.html file. We have other things, which we'll look at. So um, I'm going to undo that. And um, not too much we can do here. Oh, we, we can do something here, actually. Um, let's do this here. We've got, um, we've got this function, on device ready, blah, 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 before this function ends. And a lot like uh, Notepad, when you click on, for example, a, uh, a curly brace. It should highlight its pair, just like Notepad. And when you select instances of one piece of code, either a simple click or a double click, it'll highlight other instances also, like uh, Notepad. So it'll highlight different parts throughout the code. And um, what I like here also, we'll, we'll look at all these tricks as we go through. But also, if you do search for something, you don't have to do this yet, but when you do a search for something in the code, it highlights cool, but it also highlights on the side over here throughout your whole code. So you can go off and find the different parts of the code where something has been found. Again, we'll cover that as we actually do coding. But let's do this. Let's let's write a little bit something here for fun. 
on device ready, give yourself a new line 22 before the end of the curly brace of on device ready function, a new line 22. We'll start to write A L E. You should see then things pop up to give you help. More advanced than Notepad. You have this possibility. You have this possibility. You can select these and something like this. Uh, we're going to get used to what these icons mean as time goes on, but okay. You can type it manually or see the, the code hint. The code hint here, alert. This is a function built into JavaScript alert, which has your message, returns a void, and data type any, I believe. So you can either uh, select your pop-up or just finish typing it, alert. It's got the, the bracket the curly brace completion and all of this feedback. Okay, you've written the alert command, the method. Usually there's a message there. So, okay, that's what it's giving me as a feedback. So, in quotes, I'm a mobile developer. This is JavaScript. What am I missing? Statement. That's right, the end of statement, semicolon at the end. So save it and run it. You should see a pop up, an alert pop up with your message. <clears throat> F5, remember, uh, loads it up quickly after you save. And so I get the pop of, I'm a mobile developer. It hasn't said connecting yet. It hasn't said ready to rock yet because it's still processing that code. It stopped at that point. When I click OK, it finished loading the code, ready to rock. If I had this properly set up, again, most likely if you try to do this, it won't work. But if you've got it properly set up like I do, I plug mm -hmm. in my device, I switch over to simulate on a device, I run it, building in 1.72 seconds, getting this feedback, it takes a little longer on a real device. And it is a right there on a little real device, and I get a pop up. Ming, can you confirm right here that I got the pop up that looks like an Android device? Yep. Ming can confirm. So, there we go. Alert, I'm a mobile developer. So, it pops up looking like a uh, native, very close to original native. Even though it looked like a plain old web browser pop up in the browser, it looks very close to the real Android kind of pop up, even without having to use the extra special Cordova version. And it looks like a real device pop up. And then it gets to here and it says, ready to rock. And then my simulate, my uh, editor appears here and I can make changes up here and say, be very enthusiastic, change that, and then it changes here. So eventually we'll do this on a real device, of course, probably on Thursday. If you don't bring a device on Thursday, I've got devices, remember. If you want to bring your own device, great. Um, about devices, I have my regular phone that I have my life on. And I've got my developer phone that I don't care what happens to. I would recommend that. And you can do it on your real device. That's fine. Again, we're not going to jailbreak it. We're not going to void your warranty or anything like that. But we're going to activate developer features. And so if you want to use it on your regular device, that's fine. And it's got to be an Android device. iPhone won't work because we don't have Mac computers. And if you're going to use your own device, as I said before, Android 4.0 or higher should be the kind of device you want to bring. Phone, tablet, doesn't matter. Size of the screen doesn't matter. As long as an AT&T Verizon doesn't matter. As long as it's a 4.0, Android 4.0 or higher.
Yes. Say that again. Fire. Amazon Fire OS will work as well, yes, because it's a variation. It's a variation of Android. It's it's Amazon's version of Android because Android is open source and, and Amazon made their own version. And that'll work. One thing that I do say though is that sometimes what I see people come in with like those $78 tablets, those often don't work because the manufacturer changes on the Android so much that it's kind of hard to, to put other apps on them. So you can bring it if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But for most people, when they bring a device, it works. For some people, for some of these really like, I don't want to be mean, but bottom of the barrel Android devices, they don't work because the manufacturer changes them a bunch. But most Android devices work. So we've got some other kinds of uh, simulators here, which are not installed. Um, we have plenty of ways to test, but there's other ones. You can check those later. Install the emulator. This will load up even more sorts of devices because uh, Android can work on on TVs as well. So you can create a simulator that's like someone's, you know, 45-inch TV if you want. And you've got also what's that cool new um, device that everyone loved but now everyone forgot about? No, everyone still loves that one. Watches, yes, Android watches. Anyone uh, ever used one? Okay. So um, yeah, you can also do uh, Android watch. They call it Android Wear, I believe. Uh, devices. If you go over here to these emulators, there'll be an Android watch device. You know, like a two-inch phone screen that were very, very hot three years ago. So. Lots of ways to test our projects, lots of devices to work with. And then again, then we have uh, further expanding the possibilities. If we've got the software properly fully set up, we've also got the ability to test on iOS, Windows, and other devices. And behind the scenes, what's happening is above, above the board, what we're writing is code that we're used to or familiar with. And behind the scenes, Visual Studio is our interface, which then talks to Cordova which then Cordova translates our web code to the native device. So that web project, index.html, running on a real device, being translated to Java, basically. Java and JavaScript are not the same. And then the project loads up on a real device. These various screens here, um, let's say, uh, let's... Um, Let's say we, depending on how much stuff we're looking at, under Solution Explorer, there's a little uh, thumbtack here. Uh, go ahead and click on that, Auto Hide, and then uh, it kind of moves over to the side, and then maybe you see Properties, click that Auto Hide. So I'm just showing you can open up various tabs uh, and panels, pin them, unpin them. Let's say I uh, close. Let's say I close the Solution Explorer. If you want to get back to most of these um, panels, again they're up on the View menu. There's Solution Explorer. Let's say you kind of move things around all over the place, and you know you can uh, drag a panel out here to different places too. So you can move your interface however you want, but then maybe you moved it more than you thought. You can always go back to uh, Window, Reset, Window Layout. View two windows of code at once, vertically or horizontally. A list of your open files under Window, Auto Hide, Float. Again, if you've got more than one monitor, you can float panels so that this one monitor has this stuff and this other monitor has that stuff. 
I'm just going to reset that. Okay, so HTML, CSS, JavaScript, things that we've seen before, things that even before you took day one of the class, most people here said you had some experience in. So uh, we are uh, going to add, we're going to sprinkle in a few more ingredients here. Cordova, as I said, uh, Cordova is behind the scenes. I want to. Um, use a little bit of Cordova here. So if you go back to the web browser, I closed mine, but if you go back to the web browser, we'll go back to the website cordova.apache.org documentation. We're going to play with one of these plugins here. We're going to um, I'm going to see one of these plugins. So, Cordova and then documentation, and then on the left side, scrolling down to plugins. Let's say we'll, we'll do a dialogue. Now, the documentation in Cordova.org tells you how to set this up via command prompt. Well, I, I don't want to deal with the command prompt. I'm using Visual Studio. So again, this will be in the notes that I give you. But the uh, this we don't need this. We need Visual Studio's version. So before we can install and use any of these plugins, we need to, in Visual Studio, activate them. So I, I want to add cool dialog boxes to my project, but um, I need that particular plugin. So in Visual Studio, when you go back there, outside of the WW folder in the Solution Explorer here, outside of it, down here, you'll see something called Config XML. Double click Config XML. Config XML then has a variety of screens that we'll look at in detail, but for the moment, jump over to Plugins. In Config XML file, Plugins, we have Core, Custom, and Installed. At the moment, there's one plugin installed. The whitelist, or a way to approve um, certain certain connections to online servers. So uh, under core, we've got all of the ones listed over at uh, cordova.org, plus some extra ones. Hey, like Bluetooth. But I want to add the ability to uh, make dialogues. A little odd thing here, they call it notification. But here in the config XML, here is where we easily add the plugins. Instead of typing that arcane command that's listed at the documentation, we just have the easy way here in the config file. We find the plugin that we want, for example, notification, and then we have the document, uh, a little bit of, of about info and a link to go read the documentation, which is, you know, that screen. But then we add, go ahead and click add. So we add the notification, aka the dialogue plugin. That's going to connect over to cordova.org. It's going to download it, install it. I see successfully installed. I get some feedback at the bottom. 
And if I look on the installed view, I have two installed plugins. Obviously, if I don't want a, a plugin anymore under installed notification, I remove it. Don't remove it. But here's where I would add or remove plugins in the config file. So in order for us to use any of those Cordova features, any of those shortcuts, I have to have the plugin installed. You say, OK, great, I, I want to use them all, so I'll click and install them all. You could, but every piece of every every extra plugin that you add makes the app bigger and bigger and bigger. It takes up more space on the on the flash drive that you're working on. And it'll take up more space when it's eventually deployed to a real device. So you have to install these plugins yourself to do battery detection or Bluetooth connections or capture media like audio and video. Uh, if you want to access the files in the flat in the memory in the little uh, you know flash memory on the device, you have to install these plugins on a case by case basis of what you want to do. They're not on by default. But after you install a plugin, then it's a matter of writing the appropriate code. So, did everyone install that um, notification plugin? Let's go back to the JS file. This alert, I'm going to comment it out. Old JS alert. New fancy Cordova alert. The documentation then gives us these various uh, methods. Alert, confirm, prompt, we've seen those in um, plain JavaScript. There's also another one here, beep. Uh, we'll do this one later, which is makes a little error sound. It won't really work on, on our computers at the moment, I think. We have the volume turned off. But we've got navigator.notification.alert shows a custom alert or dialog box. Most Cordova implementations use a native box for this feature, but some use the web browser's alert, which is typically less customizable. And the basic example is we're going to write navigator.notification, that's the object, and then alert, the method, a message, an alert callback, optional title, optional button name. So the documentation explains message required it's the text it's in it's a string object or string data so it's in quotes alert callback callback function to invoke when alert dialog is dismissed so this is better this is different this is upgraded from the built-in alert because after the person clicks to close this alert more can happen built in we can call another function to do something else. So we get this pop-up, and then when they click OK, something else happens. Whereas on the alert that we used last month, it wasn't that complex. It made a pop-up, and that's it. Uh, this one has a callback function. It has a function that happens after this method executes. We can also customize the title. It's, it's a string. So it's in quotes. It's optional. If we don't write anything there, it'll just say alert. And notice the first parameter, comma, the second parameter, comma, the third parameter, and then the fourth. Another optional button name, string, in quotes, optional, defaults to OK. Full example. 
navigator.notification. Remember, you can um, put these on separate lines. Instead of putting it all on one line, they broke the line apart after each comma. That's useful for readability. So they have in quotes, you are the winner, comma. That's the message that appears. After they click the Done button, the function Alert Dismissed will run. And in the title of that dialog box, it'll say Game Over. Well, the uh, callback function was defined over here. A function that they invented called Alert Dismissed. And notice the syntax, no parentheses here. But there are parentheses when you define the function. And other stuff would happen here, like maybe play a sound. After they click the button, the button closes, then a sound plays. Well, I need to learn how to play a sound. Cordova will have the way to do that. <clears throat> to practice this, to make it very easy, copy that line right here, that, those lines of code. And that's what we're going to plug into. That's what we're going to copy and paste into our JavaScript code. I copied it. I'm going to paste it right there. We're about to create an alert in uh, native way. In the native way, it'll say, "You are the winner." The title of the box will be "Game Over." The button will be "Done." When the person clicks "Done," it'll jump back to this function, which doesn't do anything. So we'll make it do something else. Console log. We closed the dialog. We, we closed the alert box. So this code here is all. Cordova code because we added the plugin in the config XML file it's valid Cordova code if we didn't add that plugin and we tried to run this code it'll you'll get errors saying I don't know what navigator.notification is it's not def <coughs> it's not defined well we added the plugin it's in it's behind the scenes now and so now it will know when we type navigator.notification dot alert or prompt or whatever and it'll do that all of this code here has not been saved it's yellow now it's been saved now I'm gonna press F5 and check it in the in the device in the in the simulator or the real device So it's trying to do a dialog box here in the simulator. There's the game over text. There's the you are the winner. There's done. These are the colors that would be appearing on a device just for fun. Because uh, I've got mine plugged in, I'm also going to run it on a real device. I know you want to run it on your real device, but you have to wait. You have to wait next time. We'll get that working next time. So I'm going to run it on a real device. Through all of that stuff that's that was floating there last time, it said it, it created it in 1.7 seconds, and I just saw there it said it said 2.5 seconds. So again, the more code you add, the more plugins, the more stuff, the bigger the software is. You know, one second difference is not bad at all. But now we get a different pop-up here. And, and Ming, one more time, can you confirm here? Does this dialog look different than the last time? Yes. You yes. I am the winner. So. It looks different. So it looks different. And um, yeah, it looks different. The last one looked fine. It looked pretty good. But now with the native one, it looks much more like a real Android pop-up. And if I had an iPhone and I had it fully set up, I would plug in the iPhone, I would click run, and it would pop up, and it would look like an iPhone. More with like the you know transparency and such that the iPhone has. This one's got the Android aesthetic. 
That's a big idea with all of this Cordova. Each device has its own aesthetic. If you've ever borrowed your friend's iPhone just to look at it and, and, uh, and compare with your Android or vice versa, you see that the aesthetic is different. Um, I remember a few years ago the Android aesthetic was, was, was a lot like, you know, futuristic and it looked like Tron a lot and it had these, you know, lots of glows and highlights and stuff. And then, uh, you know, as I said, the Windows phones are pretty extinct. But Windows phones, their aesthetic was a very flat design, and they were the, one of the first to have it. And then the others borrowed it, and now they've all got more of a flat design. There's not the, the whole, like, shininess that there used to be on the phones, remember? There used to be, like, these drop shadows and shines and specular highlights and all that stuff. That's a little bit of a flatter, more, like, conservative or modern design in, in operating systems on phones. But still... Uh, the aesthetics of the operating system are different from platform to platform, and Cordova takes, helps take care of that in creating the proper looking environment per device. We can, of course, style it even more with CSS and such. But just with this very quick little bit of Cordova, I've got um, these results that look a lot more native. Oh, and then um, when you were simulating it also, it should have popped up down on the debug panel here. Let me see here. I, I forgot to do that. When I click Done, um, you might have noticed the panel, JavaScript Console. We closed the alert box in your JavaScript file, line 26, column 20. Well, that's what this was. Line 26 ran this function, wrote that code. When I run this on a real device, when I run it on a real device, Visual Studio also will change its screen to get into debug mode. It's going to be connected to a device. It's going to get feedback from the device. So I get the pop-up game over. I click Done. And here I also got it right there. We close the alert box. So uh, my device is giving feedback to the computer so that I can uh, keep testing it, debugging it, improving it. So, uh, general questions? Yeah. I guess, um, so, when you click on done, where is the on click then for to close? It's all behind the scenes. Okay. We don't even have to worry about that. Uh, it's even more shortcuts. Um, so, yeah, we, we didn't have to we didn't have to create an object and we didn't have to create an event listener. It knows automatically to sort of do it for us. If we're using alert, it knows someone's going to click a button. Let's deal with the button. So it's just there behind the scenes. It automatically then realizes done is clicked. It automatically runs the function alert, and then it runs. Mm -hmm. Yes? So for a Mac, um, would this install on the Mac, or would you use different? Yes, this would also install on the Mac. We've got a version. Uh, when you when you visit visualstudio.com, it will detect you're on a Mac, and it'll give you the download for the Mac version. We also have a way uh, to test in a virtual device, um, not a virtual device, in a um, virtual machine. So if you know VirtualBox or Parallels or what other ones, um, what's that other famous one? Um, VMware, yes. So if you know those, you can run Windows in VMware or VirtualBox or whatever on your Mac and then run this on your Mac as well. So different ways, and yeah, so it's Mac or Windows. Um, so the, I, the iOS, that it, would it be better on doing it on the machine or something? It would be better on the Mac because it's more, it's closer to the metal, so you have less layers of abstraction to get through for it to actually run. So um, depends on your setup and a variety of features, but often running it as close to the metal as possible is better. Um, so 
we still have more to talk about here. What I'm going to do is we're going to take our next break. I'm going to put a couple of handouts. I've been telling you that I've got handouts for you. So I'm going to put some handouts in the network folder. Um, I'll turn the printer on if you want to print them. Uh, and we'll take a break and then uh, we'll go on and we'll look at those handouts.